congratulations. Now, by raised up hands, who's a first time coach here? <coughs> first time coach. Well, first of all, welcome. The fact that you're here today is huge and it's a huge step in the right direction. So everyone received this book. <coughs> just remember, just close it a little bit because they're falling off the hinges. And just so you know, in the back of each section, you have lines and it's called brain dump. So what you're gonna do, brain dump. <laughs> you're looking like, what? You're gonna dump all the information that you're getting it into any action items that you take out of the meetings today. You're gonna dump them <coughs> in the sheet, okay? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Darlene. I'm a star diamond, and I've been doing um, this business for two, two and a half years actually now. And what I do for a living is that I am a corporate um, system analyst and program administrator manager for hospitality <coughs> industries. So recently, and only my team knows here, I decided to quit my job, and I just gave my three weeks notice. Um, now, needless to say, I am freaking out. <laughs> And I call my upline coach, I'm like, shit, what did I just do? <laughs> and she's like, relax. But after going to success club trips, and this is why we say events are really, really huge, I brought my husband with me. So he had mentioned something while we were there, and I'm like, babe, look, that's a millionaire. Honey, look, that's a top coach. Babe, that's who I'm going to be. And we came back, and we were over there, and he was like, you know what? You should really think about doing this full-time job, because you keep saying if you focus more time <coughs> into it, you know, you could make it really big. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. He's just excited. He's on a trip. We haven't been on vacation for three years, so it's just a moment. But um, I was meeting um, Melissa for lunch one day, and as I'm walking to meet her, I get this phone call from him, and he's like, honey. I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, are you at lunch? I'm like, yeah, I'm walking to go meet Melissa. He's like, I wasn't kidding what I told you in the, cru in the cruise two weeks ago. Like, what are you talking about? I completely forgot. He goes like, I want you to quit your job. I was like, what? <laughs> so I was in the middle of like the street on Fifth Avenue, screaming from the top of my lungs. I'm like, you're fucking kidding me, right? <laughs> He's like, no, sorry, I do curse. Sorry. No wonder we get along. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Why does it really? Every other sentence is a little bit. Well, maybe not because we have kids in the room. But so basically, he told me that, and at first I didn't believe him, and then. After like a week, I was struggling at work because, of course, you, you have to report to someone else. And when you're living a corporate nine-to-five job, you have to depend on that boss. It's what that boss says when that boss wants it during their time, not our own. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I was like, I'm going in on Monday, and I'm going to give my two weeks notice. And he's Ooh. like, I support you 100%. Now, the reason why I'm freaking out is because I've been working since I was 13 years old. Because in my family, I was the first one to go to college, the first one to um, buy a home. I was the first for everything. So when he told me this, I'm like, he's like, I know why you're freaking out. It's like, you tell me why I'm freaking out. He's like, because you make more money than me. You're the breadwinner, and you're about to go from making this much to none. I'm like, yep, because I love making more money than you. <laughs> so he's like, I have no doubt that before the year's over, you're going to make it. Go ahead and quit. So I walked in and I gave my three weeks notice and my last day is April 29th and I be, I'll be a full-time Beachbody coach. Woo, woo. Right. So I'm really excited and nervous at the same time. Now with that said, we're going to go into the first section which is coach basics. Now talk about business and making it happen. This right here is the bread, the butter, the meat, the way you succeed and take your business to the next level. Now how many of you here have done the training in your back? You've done your training, perfect. So this right here gives you the four vital behaviors and this is, it gives you our mission. This is the core of our business. So if you are your job in nine to five, you have a mission statement, right? Well, our mission statement is to help people achieve their goals and enjoy a healthy, fulfilling life. I don't know about you, but in my nine to five, I don't say blouse. And when my boss comes up to me and be like, I need this like quick, I'm like, back it up. <laughs> You're not having a heart attack, we're not going to a hospital, so I'm like, I'll get it done when I get it done. But this right here, you are saving lives. This matters. When you help a challenger and they call you and say, because of you, I'm going to fit in that wedding dress, that should give you goosebumps because you are literally changing lives. When I get a phone call from my challenger and tell, they tell me, because of you, my cholesterol is down, I no longer have to take blood pressure medication just because of Shakeology. That motivates me to do more. And 
How does that really happen? That happens by you following the four vital behaviors. This is the key to your business. This is what's gonna get you where you need to be and kick your, your business off the ground running. Now, let's face it, you go to trainings, you go to meetings, and you get all this awesome information and all these awesome tools and cool tips and nuggets of information, but what happens when you go home? Normally what happens is that you tend not to implement. And when you tend not to implement, that's when you start failing. Which is okay because if we fail seven times, we get back up eight. Mm -hmm. So as long as you learn and you say, you know what, enough is enough, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it happen, that's all that matters. Our vital behaviors invite, invite, invite. I guarantee you, you invite every single day and you invite at least, let's say 30 people for five days a week, for a month, help me do a math, 150 invites a month or more? I know, I'm not. 30 people a day, five days a week. That's 150. That's 150. So imagine you inviting 150. Now, the best thing that when I um, add new coaches, they tell me, I send them through the training, I hold their hand, I'm like, here's 21 days, you know, we're going through it, I'm gonna help you out. And the first thing I hear, I gotta know. I'm like, yes, awesome, we gotta know, we love no's. Because to me, what that means, and this is what I teach them, you haven't like been in front of them enough to flip that objection. Mm -hmm. You haven't exposed them enough of what you do and, how, and the awesome, awesomeness that we have with Beachbody, they're, they're telling you no. So that no just means not yet. Now, expose them like about five to seven times and that eventually is gonna flip as long as you stay consistent. Guys, the key here, consistency is key. There's no questions about it. If you invite 30 people today or five people today, and then you say, Monday and Tuesday, you know what, I'm gonna take it off, and then you go back on Friday, and you're like, oh yeah, today's gonna be a day that I'm gonna invite, what do you think is gonna happen? You're inconsistent. And when you're inconsistent, everybody sees that, everybody feels that, because you are now following your core behaviors. Now, I don't know about you, but I did not pay a million dollars to open my storefront. I only pay $140 for a challenge pack. Now, for a business owner, <laughs> A hundred, like one million dollars versus one forty. We this is dirt cheap. I don't know about you, but this is dirt cheap. Now, for a business owner that actually has a storefront, you literally have to get out of bed every single day and open your door. For us, which our biggest thing for so is social media, our biggest job is social media. Now, the day that you don't post three times a day, your store is closed. Mm -hmm. No questions asked. Now. The reason why I bring up this point is because I had a challenger that follows me and follows my old coworker, and my old coworker is my, my coach. And they call me up and they told me, you post every day and you're consistent. I don't see the same from her. I see you working out. I see you sharing a motivational speech. So guess what? I'm coming to you, I'm not coming to her. Why? I open my storefront seven days a week. And even if it's on the weekend, I, didn't, I posted mainly family stuff, but I opened my store. And that's the key, staying consistent, open the store, be proof that the product works, work out. If they just see you posting and eating and not working out, why would they come to you? That's part of our core behaviors. Do personal development when you're feeling down in the ground. I, people normally call my online calls me, she's like, what personal development are you reading right now? And I scratch my head, I'm like, don't be mad, because I'm not really reading any. She goes like, well, how are you always positive? I'm like, I put really loud music in my car, and I just pump it, like, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm always energized. I don't know what to tell you. It just happens, and it's worse when I drink coffee, so don't give me coffee. Hence, I didn't really drink coffee this morning. This is natural. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we can relate. <laughs> and the last one that we have for the vital core behaviors is to recognize. Now, the last one, number four, is new, because basically, well, as we grow as an organization and as a team, you're gonna have different types of personalities in your team. Now, it's your job as a leader to recognize this type of personality and recognize accordingly. I'm not gonna recognize my introverts the same way I recognize my extroverts. So I know that my, and I, I'm the first one to tell um, Audrey, who's my upline, I was like, girl, I just hit Success Club 10 on the fifth of the month, you better post that. I'm like, go post it and shout me out. Now, that's my gem, that's my personality. I feed off um, recognition. I feed off money, so you give me a goal and you tell me money is involved, I'm the first one to run. Now, we can be the same way with someone who's not driven 
by competition and you have to treat them differently. So our job as leaders is get to know your team and recognize them that way. If they don't, if they're like the hush hush, hey, send them a message on the side and be like, you know, great job. Now, if you have extroverted people who love competition like myself, you'll be the first one to go on a Thursday when everything comes on the board and they hit a milestone, go on the team page and give them a huge shout out because that drives someone. So recognize is number four, get to know your team. The more you know them, the more you're gonna learn how to operate in your business and the better it's gonna go for you. Any questions so far? No. Can I ask a question? Yes. Just because I know other people are thinking and they don't ask it. Um, if you're a new coach and you have no coaches, um, how do you implement the fourth vital behavior? I give myself, oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. It's been a question that's been going around. So I just, do you want? Yeah. And, and by the way, the fourth vital behavior is something new. It just, okay. it it just came out. It just came out, right? So actually, that is a very great question. If you don't have coaches under you, under you recognition. I have an idea. So have the, no the goal, the, first of all, the goal is number one. Oh. The goal is um, if, if you have your challenge group, number one, recognize your challengers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's not just your coaches. If you don't have a coach, you can't recognize your coach. But you can also, you know, give a shout out, you know, and, and, and as Darlene said, um, when it's posted on the team page to recognize your, your team members. But your challengers, recognize your challengers. Um, and also, recognition comes in different forms. So, <coughs> for example, if you have a successful upline, you want to talk about your upline success on your social media because people are going to join you. Like, let's say I join Audrey or, or Mickey or whoever, or Darlene today. I'm going to share my upline coach, Darlene, is going to quit her job in three weeks, and I'm super excited because I want to quit my job too. That's recognition. You're recognizing your upline, you're talking about her story, and you're going to relate to somebody. So it could come, and this has been circulating, and I know that a lot of you probably feel like you don't have anybody to recognize you too. You recognize your upline. You can become successful just because you're on a good team. You're in a team, you know, besides all the, the partnerships that we have with Lead Well and, and your team, and, but Team Eagle has almost 10,000 coaches. That's something that should be part of your lingo. You know, I'm part of this huge team in New York City that has over 10,000, you know, has almost 10,000 coaches, and we should be there like by next week. So you can say it, 10,000 coaches. That has value. That is gonna, you know, attract people to you, and then you get into the the you get into the habit of using the fourth vital behavior when you start becoming successful. I would also go even deeper and go recognize yourself. I mean, that too. Wow, I was how far have you come? Yeah. Yeah. How far? I mean, mm -hmm. there's a training that some of us are doing that recognize yourself every Tuesday, every yeah. Thursday. Remind yourself of who the person that, that you are, you're becoming, or you're trying to reach for. You know, do that mm -hmm. more. Because that's the problem that we face a lot. Is that we start recognizing other people, and then we forget who we are. You know what I mean? So that's another thing I think you should guys learn how to recognize yourself for what you've done, and stop downing yourself for what you haven't yet done. So try to recognize yourself more personally. Give yourself more credit. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes people out there, if you want people to work with you, they want to work with you. They don't want to work with your upline. They don't know your upline. They don't you know you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's going on top of, you know, Saudi. The same thing that Saudi said. If you have what Saudi has, or when you have what Mickey has, but also don't forget about yourself. <laughs> you do matter too, you know what I mean? You, you, you're, you're here. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, some of you maybe have jobs. You guys said, I'm sick. <laughs> you can't come to work tonight. I'm here. So just, you know. That, that's a leap of faith that you guys took today to be here. So recognize yourself for, even if you don't want to put it in the public because maybe you have your boss out there, but recognize yourself for saying, wait a minute, I did, I just came out of my way to be here. She came from Baltimore. She said, what? <laughs> that, I mean, that's crazy. Like, that's you should be recognized for that. Obviously, your coach is going to recognize you for it. But that's commitment. I mean, if it, it, it's simple, like whatever, it took you three hours to get here. Right. But it's like it took her four hours, but you know, she's, she's like, in her head, you should be telling yourself, I deserve this. I just yeah. drove four hours here. You know what I mean? So learn to recognize yourself. I think that's the problem that a lot of people have. Yeah, and that's a great point because especially as a new coach, when you first start, the number one thing that you should be doing is sharing your story. 
people normally come to you and gravitate to you and your target market comes to you because of the story that you share. I always say use um, social media as your diary. That's your diary. The more you share, the more people are gonna come to you and start asking you questions. Okay, so now we're just gonna flip really quick. We're gonna go to the back where it says Go Basics. So if you flip to the back to Go Basics, we're just gonna talk about just a few key things going from vital behaviors and how to get there. So this vital behaviors is our mission statement, our core, what we're about. This section right here is how are you gonna get to that section? How are you gonna make it happen? Now, how many of you here at your job have goals? How many of you have yearly goals? I bet that you sit with your boss in the beginning of the year to set up the goal for, for the entire year, right? <laughs> so I'm a firm believer, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. If you didn't write it down somewhere, you didn't write it on the board, you're not gonna make it happen. So make sure that your goals are clear and they're written somewhere for you to see. Because when you see it, one, they become actionable, and two, you, you are gonna make sure to make it happen. And you have to treat um, your business, especially as a new coach coming in, you have to treat the business as, I'm gonna give myself obtainable goals. So I'm gonna give myself small goals to get me to the big ones you know, down the road, okay? So just by this little saying, a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. Make sure that you place a date. I told Kim Carver I was gonna be elite by December 31st. Now, when he gave me a wager, I was scratching my head and I'm like, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna get that done, but it'll get done. <laughs> So, is he watching? No. Absolutely, I know he's watching. So, I am driving full force. So, I wrote my goals down. A goal broken down into steps become a plan. What's your step? You have a calendar. You know when qualifications are, are coming in. You know that you have to hit certain um, goals by certain dates because you get recognized at Summit. Or you get invited to an amazing event that you know, the team is making here in New York City and you know what, you wanna get there. So our goals is amazing because our number one goal is to help people out. Help them with their fitness journey and create the impossible in their head, make it possible. Because a lot of people that you help think, I gave birth three years ago and I'm never gonna lose the baby fat. Hey, it happened to me. My doctor, when I went, my old BJYN told me, say goodbye to your curves, you're never gonna see them again. And I said, damn skippy I am, and I'll be damned if I don't. So needless to say, I went through my journey, and I went the other day to his office, and I took all my clothes off, and I was like, I think I see curves here. <laughs> and he was like, I'm very proud, because not a lot of um, women that give birth tend to go back to what they used to have. So when you have those type of challengers, your job as a life coach, because that's what we are, is to show them the way, show them the light, show them, no, it is possible, I, let me guide you, let me support you, and let me motivate you, and get you there, okay? And the last one, a plan backed by action makes your dreams come true. What doesn't get measured, doesn't get done. Now, how many of you here have heard of the acronym SMART? SMART goal. If you work in corporate America, you hear this all the time, especially in the beginning of the year. So what it totally means, if you flip the page, SMART goals, the S stands for specific. Be specific. I want to be an Emerald coach as a new coach. I started today. I want to be an Emerald coach, which is the next rank, by April 30th. That's a specific goal. You're putting action into it, and you're saying when it's going to happen. M, make it measurable. So make sure that it's measurable, it's not something crazy out there that you're saying, I just started today and by April 30th, I'm gonna be a 15 star diamond. And then how are you gonna get there? Measure it. My first thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna invite two people into the business. That's how I'm gonna get it done. The A starts, um, stands for attainable, and actually if you flip the page, it tells you exactly what it means. When you identify goals that are most important to you, you begin to figure out ways you can make them come true. You develop the attitude, the abilities, the skills, and financial capacity to reach them. You begin seeing previously overlooked opportunities to bring yourself closer to the achievement of that goal. That's what the A stands for, attainable. Look for the goal and make sure that you could get there. R, be realistic. Don't set unrealistic goals. 
A goal must present an objective towards which you are both willing and able to work. You can't say I'm gonna be 15 star diamond by April 30th when you have just started and you're getting to know the lay of the land. So make it realistic. A realistic goal is I'm gonna be emerald by April 30th. I'm gonna be diamond by October 31st. And you know what? By next year, I'm gonna be premier elite diamond because I'm gonna go for it. That those are realistic goals. And then timely is just that. Timely is give it a state stamp, stamp it. This is when it's gonna get done. This is when I'm gonna make it happen. This is when it's gonna come true. So those, that those is what means when you are specific and you have smart goals. The who, the what, the where, the when, the which, and the why. Do you guys have any questions for what SMART goals stand for? No? So if you haven't set your goals, here, here's an action plan for you. Go into your brain dump section <coughs> and write down what your next goal is, wherever you are in your business. Because we have new coaches and we also have veteran coaches in here. What's your next goal? When are you going to get it done? My next goal is elite, and I'm gonna get it done by December 31st. Now, what do I have to do? What's my measurable goal? Is that I need to help my coaches get there. Because I just got a reality check the other day. I may be doing amazing in my, in, you know, as a coach, but if I'm not helping my team, I'm not being a good leader. So if my team is not making it, I'm not making it. This is a team effort. When your team wins, you win. If you win, your team wins. So this is a team effort and we only get there together. Yes. I have a question. Um, if, you, if you're an emerald, say, and you happen to be an emerald because you signed up your husband and maybe you only have one <laughs> other coach under you and maybe they don't necessarily want to work the business, um, what's the realistic goal to making you a diamond? Like how long would you say if you hustle, would it take under those circumstances to get to diamond? Because I want to be diamond, but realistically, I don't know what you're already doubting yourself. It's based mm -hmm. on your effort. It's a decision. Yeah. It's a decision. I'll get to I'll get to the doubt part. We're, we're gonna, Heck, I'm gonna break it down for you. To do today. You're gonna come yeah. out of here ready to go diamond and I got you. Hector, Hector's gonna take that step part. Okay. That's the next part. But just to answer your question, it's all based on you. It's what you want. Hey, I I've been a coach for two years. I'm a star diamond, and I just started hitting success to ten every single month. But that's because I made the decision and I said I could do this. If I wasn't doing it before, it's because I was doing the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Hell, I'm quitting my job on April 29th. I better not be doing the bare minimum. Yeah. So non-negotiable, I'm inviting every single day, including the weekends. Because you know, I tell my husband, I'm like, you take the kids, I got the business. Sure, and when I make it, then I'll sleep. Or when I die, then I'll sleep. That's, that's what you're doing too. You're doing something every night. Right? Yeah, I do power hour every night. So who here was a super Saturday last week? Did you guys take the Power Hour pamphlet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're right, I'm gonna put them right here. Or <laughs> I need another one. Thank you. So basically, here's a great example. Let me get one, Norris. Here's a great example of how. Now, you could say, I'm gonna invite, because that's one of our core basics, and I'm gonna invite, invite, invite. But if you don't put it into play, and you don't start doing it, you're not gonna get it done. Now, how do you get it done? It's this magic <coughs> word, two words, power hour. If you're consistently taking at least one hour out of your day to really focus on your business, we guarantee that you're going to hit your mark. We guarantee that you're going to hit your goal. But the moment that you wave and you say, you know what, I'm not going to do a power hour today because I'm tired. And I just came home from work. I work a nine to five. I'm a wife. I'm a mom of two boys. And I'm also a fitness instructor. So I teach classes five days a week. So I go from work, from eight, from an 8.30 job to a 5.30 job. I then go teach classes from 6 to 7. I don't get home until 9 o'clock at night. And that's normally me saying, you know what, let me do homework. Let me feed them. Let me spend some quality time with my kids, read stories, bathe them, and put them in the bed. And then what? It's on. For me, it's on. And I start with my power hour. Now, because... I wasn't consistent, and this is how I started hitting Success Club 10 right here, doing this every single night after we came back from our Success Club trip. I, we were listening to the, the top 10 coaches on the panel, and I keep hearing that magic number 30. I'm like, it cannot be that easy. 
But then it's just that easy. You invite 30 people a day, a day times five days a week in a month, that's 150 people. You're going to get five people from 150 people. Come on. If you don't get five, then you know what? That's when you go to your upline or you give yourself a reality check and say, I'm doing something wrong in my business. Let me go back. Let me go back to basics. Hey, where are we today? Back to basics. Let me go back to see where there's hinges, like where I need to tighten up those screws to make it happen. For me, it was the power hour. For me, this is where I went back and said, something's wrong that I'm only hitting success level eight, success level nine, and I don't get to the 10. Now I'm up, right now I'm at 14. I'm due to be at 16 by the end of the week. Actually, it is the end of the week, by Sunday. <laughs> I'm due to be at 16 just doing this. So what we started doing in our team is that every night, Monday through Friday, we do power hour because I was saying, you know what, I'm going to make it live because that's the only way I stay consistent when I have other people that are depending to log in at this time. And if I'm not on and some people come on, they'll be like, well, where is she? So for me, that's a given. Like yesterday I was teaching until 9.30 p.m. I call my upline. I'm like, I need you to start it for me. And as soon as I get home, I'll, get, I'll take over. And that's exactly what happened. We went from just me being alone in a Zoom. So I do Zoom by myself. So then my team coming along, so we were like about four, and last night we had 20 people. We had 20, so that means that the word is getting around, and I'm not the only one that wants to go um, like fast and furious. That means that our team wants to take this whole organization you know, to the next level. That's why when I came in and Miki said, I have a feeling, I have a feeling. <laughs> and she said, we're gonna take this to the next level. Hell yeah, we are because we all made that decision to take it to the next level and we're all being consistent doing something to take it to the next level. Now, if you don't take it to the next level and you are where you are still, it's because you made the choice and you are a holder backer. You're holding back on yourself. So you're not getting there, it's all due to you because we all had choices. Your choices may not be the same as mine, but if I choose that I'm gonna run and you're just gonna walk, that's your choice versus mine. But you have the same choices we have. We have the same training materials. We have the same information. It's just that someone takes it further than you. That's the only difference. And with that said, I'm done. <laughs> ah, with three minutes to spare. I like you. Anybody want pee break? Anybody want pee break? You want no action to this? I knew you were going to I knew he was just saying. He's never going to let me use his bathroom when I go to his house. Um, obviously, I'm here today, guys, to talk to you about the section that everyone has before you even join Beach Body is overcoming your fear. And that's one of my favorite topics that I love to touch on. I don't know many of your faces here, but some of you I do know, and I know a lot of you have a lot of fears that you're stuck at, right? So bear with me as I create energy, because I'm, I'm an energy person. I like to feel the room out. I like to make sure that you, know, you guys are feeling me the same way I'm feeling you to be the same page. Because uh, the one thing you probably did when you came in, you probably overthought. You're like, is this going to be for me? Am I going to be dying at a certain time? Am I going to get to the level that I need to be in life, in general, or whatever it might be? Once you start creating negative mindsets, you're going to create a negative lifestyle. I don't care what it is that you're going through in life. If you keep feeding it the energy that it does not deserve, you're going to start getting the energy that it deserves because that's what you're giving it. So whatever it is that you're putting out there is what you're gonna receive. So you gotta ask yourself, what's coming out of your mouth every single day? When you wake up, how are you feeling when you get up? When you go to sleep, how are you going to sleep? You know what I'm saying? Like Those are the things that you need to focus on on a daily basis. A lot of people have a certain feeling, a certain action, a certain doubt in their minds. And the more you pay attention to the doubt, the feeling and the action that's not that's shying away from the actual goal, now you're focusing your energy that direction, right? So you got to start focusing your mindset because at the end of the day, listen, all these trainings and what these amazing trainers are going to give you today is nothing. It doesn't mean anything if your mindset isn't in the correct spot. 
My definition of fear is feeling emotional at rebirth. Think about that. Feeling emotional at rebirth. A lot of you tend to like take this leap of faith, right? Like she's about to do it. She's like probably like the week before she's going to be like, she's going to have like a lot of things coming up, like going through her body, right? And then when it gets to the last day, she's like, am I making the right decision? Is this the right thing for me? This is going to be me. Doubt, fear starts kicking in. You already made the decision. You took a leap of faith, right? But when you take a leap of faith, you can't attach faith and fear to the same definition. Because when you do that, get, guess what you're doing? You're, you're kind of doubting yourself now. Now, when you doubt yourself, you second-guess yourself. And when you second-guess yourself, you don't go through with your decision. So that's something that you really got to think about in any decision in life. How, whatever it is that you're, you're, you're coming across in life, you've got to be careful how you speak to your kids, to your husbands. Because it's these old women. <laughs> Sorry, I don't um, Like, seriously, like, how you speak to your significant other at your workplace, anywhere you are, you've got to be careful how you treat others. Because it's a whirlwind. It's a circle. It's a merry-go-round. It's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. How many of you, and I was talking about this this morning, how many of you tend to start driving, right? And then you just want to get to this place like really fast. It's like, God, I got to get there fast. And you, start, boom, 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 boom. you start passing everybody. But then when you get to a stoplight, that person just stands right next to you. Like, <laughs> That sucks, doesn't it? Uh, it's like you, you're trying to get there like in a speed of light, but you don't get there. That, that rush feeling, that mindset that I need to get somewhere real fast, it starts kicking in your head, and then you gotta like you feel like you gotta go to this extra burst, right? Take your time. Don't rush success. Rush the patience to be successful. So if you start doing that, if you start being patient in success in life in general, you're gonna get there. Just because you're gonna hit roadblocks, this is Minky, Sari, myself, and everybody in this room hit roadblocks every day. You probably hit a couple of roadblocks from here for hours, right? <laughs> she almost went back home. She almost went back home. <laughs> you know what? And that, and I'm glad you said that. Thank you for sharing that. Because this is what I, I love energy. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's the way it is. She got challenged. She got tested on the way here. This is a perfect example. Imagine if she would have turned around. What about three months from now? Because of this one meeting right now, her whole life changes. <laughs> this is God's way of showing you you got to be where you need to be. If, you're, if you make a decision, she woke up this morning, my decision is to get to this training, get the proper tools that I need, and go home and implement them right away. But what happens if she would have never showed up? She would have never got the tools, and she would have went home. She would have turned around the same way she left the house. So you got to go through with your actions. You cannot let fear keep attacking you because it's not going to stop. When you're at your highest point, when you're at the peak of the mountain, right? When you're at that peak, you're climbing it up, and then you're like, ah, you know what, that's too high. But you're like 10 feet away, and then you're going to go right back down. Life is going to challenge you every single day with the same exact action. Overthinking is not going to get you to where you want to be. Some of you, how many of you overthink everything? When you overthink, what happens, and think about this, I'm going to... Think about what I just said. When you overthink, mm -hmm. are you exactly where you were before you before you began to like think over overthink in that situation? Yeah. If you're still there, you're gonna stay there for the rest of your life. No matter what you do. Because you're overthinking everything. You're thinking, oh I'm an emerald, and I I, I kind of manufactured the emerald. Is that what you said, right? Kind of yeah. sort of. We all do. Yeah. I manufactured my emerald. How many of you manufactured the emerald? You're not by yourself. The point is, is that we all manufacture ourselves to give ourselves vision. We can't give ourselves vision unless we manufacture it, unless we're implementing the tools that we need to do. Sometimes we got to fake it till we make it, right? We heard that before, right? So what? You're an emerald. Own that. But you can't say, I'm an emerald, and uh, I'm only an emerald because my husband's there and my best friend's there. So what? <laughs> Own it. Because those are the first steps. Now, you know what? Now you give yourself nine, uh, 30 days to create another emerald. So if, if all of you create four emeralds in your business, back to back to back to back, guess what? You're like two emeralds away from becoming an emerald. Think about that, right? So now, why would you overthink the first step? 
You're not, you're not thinking big. You've got to learn to think bigger. You know what I mean? And fear will always stop you. Because you're getting to a point that is like, it's so far-fetched. Oh my God, but Mickey's over there. Sonny's over there. And I had this there. And I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do that. But that's too hard. What do you think? We got there easy? I've been in this business for five years. Five years. Truly working it, three years. Because the first two years, I was being selfish. I'm not going to lie. I worked it from, I, I, I worked on me. You know what I mean? We all started at the same time. We didn't have the tools that you guys have right now. These tools right now, you guys should be blessing them. They should you guys go, amen, hallelujah. All that stuff. <laughs> Seriously, because what you have, you got something that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. So you guys should be embracing this, loving it, and not being fearful of it. You know, like the definition of my team is, uh, my team name is Team Faith, is faith always initiates the hard work. So you got to start really owning that hard work. You got to believe. First, you got to have faith before you do anything. That's what they say. Take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. You hear that all the time. Take a leap of faith. But you can't just take a leap of faith. You can't do that. You got to take the faith. You got to own it within you so that you can get to that destination no matter how long it takes you. Five years and I just officially became a three-star diamond coach. But you know what? I didn't do that by myself. I did it with three individuals that wanted to see, that saw the same vision that I did. You got to see that too. But first, you got to see it for yourself. Who was it? That, who was it that before that said that? You know about herself or something like that. That's it. Who it was? But anyway, it's like if you don't see yourself at the end of the road, you're not going to see your team at the end of the road. Mm -hmm. You got to stop putting yourself last. Some of you are parents. You guys put your kids first. That's kind of, to me, I'm not a parent yet, but I am an uncle or whatever, but it's a mistake that you do. Because when you put their lives first, you put yourself in the back burner, and when you want to feel better about yourself, you're not really feeling fulfilled. What are you really training your kids to be? Followers or leaders, right? So you want to be a leader. You want to be the leader. You want to. You don't, you don't want the kids to pull you. You want. You want to pull the kids to wherever it is that they want to be at. You want to give them that. Listen, if you want to lead, I'm going to show you how to lead. But you got to follow me. You know what I mean? Take ownership of your life. Take ownership of your fears. Face them. How many of you have faced your fears and probably failed? How many of you faced? Who wants to share one? You're fearful, right? <laughs> Let me guess. One of your one of your biggest fears is public speaking, right? Because <laughs> obviously nobody wants to say anything, right? So you got listen, when like like um, Sally was talking about when you you got to post. Go ahead, sure. Yeah. Um, I I I think in my current job now it'll be sixteen years in June, mm -hmm. and I tried to leave my job twice. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm in the dental field. And every time I would go in with a pan, I could say, oh, God, this pan, I want more. I always knew in the back of my mind that I was destined for more. I just didn't know what that more was. My boss is a, has a, a way to sit me down. He's like a father figure. What are we going to do? He looks at the family. But, you know, things have gotten rough in the last year because now I work from home. And now I'm running my business. For the first time, my boss noticed in January when I decided to become a coach. He said, you're going to coach someone? Who are you going to coach? And that to me was fuel to the fire to say, you know what, buddy? I'm not running your business anymore. I'm running my business. And I failed before at not being able to be assertive and instinctively proclaim the same. You know what? God didn't bring me this far to let me grow. So now at 40, I'm telling him to kiss my ass. <laughs> In a nice way, I told him yesterday, yeah, these are my terms. Right. These are the hours that I can work. Yes, I do work from home, but what I bring you and my dedication is 100%. When I'm with my family and my business, I want to give it 100%. Right. And when I'm with you, I'm it. And that's where I'm in this time, I'm not going to fail because right. I know now that I have to just keep going. So your biggest fear was being stuck in the my same place and not knowing. My biggest fear was not knowing, oh my God, how am I going to support my right. kids? Oh my God, how am I going to pay the right. card note? That was my fear. Right. So, so that so that helped me back. Thank you for sharing that. And that's what a lot of us face. Whatever it is, take that example and just look at the fearful part. Like, a lot of you are stuck. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about just the business, because the business is just, let's, let's just say like an added bonus to your life, right? Because at the end of the day, if you don't own your personal life, you're not gonna own your business. So you gotta first own yourself so that you can own your business. So you really gotta dissect yourself and knowing what is it that is stopping you that every time I start something, I can't finish. That's who I was. I used to be a person that starts stuff and never finished. Some of you are probably the exact same thing in your own world, in your own section. And me, it was for fitness too. Like, I, I mean, I lost weight more than, oh my God, was I there. I did some crazy stuff and I ate twice a day. Like, how many of you eat twice a day? I, I don't do that now, please. I'm um, but I didn't know then what I know now. It's all about trial and error. It's about making mistakes. Listen, embrace mistakes. You got to start embracing mistakes. Can I make a comment? Sure. Just to piggyback off of what you said, Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with my manager, Mm -hmm. and she tried to plant the seed in my head, like, well, are you planning to go back to school? Because, like, nobody really is going to hire you because you don't have a college education. Because I had my daughter young, so I basically went to college Devon, you know what I mean? I didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't go to school um, after high school. So that seed planted, and I've been at my job for nine years, so for the last four, it's been like, you can't leave because no one's gonna hire you. So you can't let people, you know, you can't let people get in your ear because that will just light the fire of your fear and then you'll go back in the shell and you'll be stuck. And you're like, you're right, nobody will want me. Exactly. And and that's the thing that, and that's the thing that I want you guys to focus on. Write this down because I said it on Super Saturday. I'm saying it again. For every level, there's a level. 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 You guys wrote that down. Uh, I mean, I, I got it from the motor. I got it from the guy from. I can't even name. It's the guy from Fast and Furious. The black guy. Excuse me. Uh, oh my God, I love him. And he he's, he's he's spoke to, What's his name? Ty, 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 Tyrese. 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 Right, Tyrese said it in one of his like you know YouTube motivation things, and I'm like, boom! Like I got just got hit. Every level of life, every listen, in every level of your life, you're gonna face a challenge. You're gonna face destruction. You're like you're like at this peak. You're feeling high. You're like super excited. Like the lady was like, bah, 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 bah. so and that's, how, and that's how I am. But you know what? There's always someone out there that wants to. Throw the dart at you. Yeah. They're trying to pop your bubble. They want to stop you down. That's going to happen, guys. Expect it. It's, you're not exempt. The prime example I love to use is the President of the United States. Mm-hmm. That man is how he rules our, our country. He's the ruler, right? You're supposed to get 100% of the votes if you're going to run the country, right? He don't even get 50%. Of the, he don't even get 50% of the votes. You know what I mean? I mean 100% of the votes. He only gets like 51% to win the ballots, right? <laughs> Who are you? What makes you different? Mm-hmm. You're no different. Mm-hmm. You're just as vulnerable as he is. The only thing he has to pull a couple more strings and make more money than me sometimes. <laughs> but that's you know it is what it is. But what my point <coughs> is is that you need to start getting out of this little this six foot hole that you dig you dug yourself into. Mm-hmm. You dug yourself into the six foot hole because it's a choice. Something I also said recently is that who, what, who were you the first 20 years of your life? Mm-hmm. Who were you the first 20 years of your life? Mm-hmm. Why do I say that? <laughs> the reason why I say that is because somebody's controlling you for those first 20 years. Mm-hmm. You live with your parents, mm-hmm. teachers, mm-hmm. guidance counselors, etc. Mm-hmm. Do your own judgment. Aunts, uncles, the old guys, whatever you want to call it. So it's like you got to start analyzing where did you change? You, you know how they say that these kids are free. They can just be whoever they want to be. They dream, I want to be an astronaut when I grow up. I want to be a doctor when I grow up. I want to be a nurse. But something changes. Something trans, tra- transpires in your mind, right? So you need to reinvent yourself because somebody invented you. You had this one creation at the beginning, and now you, you got reinvented by somebody else's vision, perspectives. You know what I mean? So you're not going to get to where you want to be living someone else's life. So you need to stop that. And that's all part of fear. It's a part of fear. Because you know what? You know how they say, you know, I'm living, my like when your parents say, I'm living through your eyes. I'm living through your eyes. Because I couldn't do it, but I want you to do what I that What I couldn't do, I want you to do. That's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair for the kid because now the kid, you're limiting him to your own beliefs. 
How about if God had a different purpose for him? How about if God has a different vision for where he wanted to go? You need to start asking yourself that. You got your little girl here. You know what I mean? You, she needs to be independent. I mean, sometimes they get a little crazy. Like, it's cool. You can do that. It's cool. But you got to give them some independency as well. You know what I mean? But they got to learn. You got to make mistakes. They got to fail. Because if you don't fail, you're never going to learn. Musa, like she, I think she said before, it's like, you know, it's like, learn to fail. So that you can learn to succeed. But it's the word I'm trying to get. I'm like blanking out right now, bro. It's like every time you like if you guys could go back, maybe like 10 years ago, or whatever, how many of you learned from your failure? How many of you learned from your failure? Actually learn. Now let me ask you a, a follow-up. Did that failure come back again? Yeah. Do you get it? <laughs> Think about that. If the failure that you supposedly learned from comes back again, that means you didn't learn the first time. You didn't learn the lesson the first time. You didn't learn the lesson that life is trying to teach you. Because life is a life is a whirlwind. It's gonna keep coming back again. Now I asked you guys this question. And I asked I love to ask this question. Two weeks ago. Am I saying something today that maybe you was asking yourself two weeks ago? Somebody raise your hand if that is you. Be real. Come on. Now you guys think. Wait, what what you I say again? Were you thinking of what I am telling you today, two weeks ago? I had a, I have a 14-year-old, and he's a straight-A student all throughout school. He's in um, high school now. And he was talking, he, he's into wrestling now. And he goes, are you going to support my wrestling career? I look at him, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, what do you think? I was made to sit behind the desk? Ooh. That might have been you, but not me. Wow. He's like, you're miserable at the bank. I was wow. like, I am. That's why I'm doing this. He goes, um, I work out with you, so who knows? But you need to support me. I, I like him. I know. Uh, you, know. You, see, but you know what? Yeah. How many kids? He knows me. I was like, but how oh, many kids oh, really oh, do that? God. Kids don't do that. You know why? Yeah. Because we're too like, yeah. 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 this is what I am. This is who I am. And guess what? It, it goes back to your parents. But that's why one thing I want to talk to you guys about parents is that. Whoever in here, because I and, and I got chills right now, because maybe somebody just feeling that. Whoever here blames your parents for where you are, you're making a mistake. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because the problem is, is that your parents were living the life they were taught, mm -hmm. and you're living the life mm -hmm. you're taught, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a choice. Yeah. It's all about a choice. If you are not choosing to live the life you were meant to live, and you're like. Pero fulana me dijo que yo no puedo hacer eso. I can't do this, I can't do that. Then you're blaming someone else. You're blaming your coworker. You're blaming your partner, your teammate. Don't blame nobody for your failings and your mistakes. Blame yourself. Ownership. If you don't take ownership of yourself, you're not going to get to where you want to be. You got to start knocking fear in the face and you got to start taking action each and every day. If you're stuck, wherever you're stuck in, start... Do the opposite of what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if, what, if you're thinking that, like for me, I swear this is what I did when I was aiming for my abs. Right? I was like, "Hey, you ain't aiming. <laughs> I'm coming for you." I swear, I swear, I did that. I swear. I found the mirror. I was like, "Oh, you? Well, yeah, I, I'm coming for you." I swear, I did that every day. And you know what? It took me four months, but I got it. And you know why? Because my vision was stuck in that way. I wasn't gonna say that. Oh, I'm heavy. I'm, I'm not focusing on what I, I was focusing more on what I wanted and not what I wasn't. Because if you start focusing more on the things you don't want, you're going to get the things you don't want. Mm -hmm. So change your mindset. Change the way you're going. Change the way you think. <clears throat> change the what you want. What is, your, <coughs> what is your vision? Because I don't know. I just, ever since you walked in, I've been driven to you. Four hours later, you should be at least something. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you one question, seriously. If you don't mind sharing, what's your biggest fear? My biggest fear, mm -hmm. um, failure. Anything. Like, be specific. Um, just, I guess, in life in general, just not. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid to be judged? Mm -hmm. I am afraid to be judged, absolutely. And I think everybody is. In some well, way, I'm just focused on you. I'm sorry, I'm turning red. <laughs> 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 you put me on the spot. I love you. Um, 
judgment and failure in life, not not being able to take care of myself. Let me, let, let me say something. All of them are going to be judged. Good or bad. You're going to be judged. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get picked up. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get picked up. Embrace the judgment. Because if you're being judged for something good, it's because someone can't do what you're doing. But if you're focused on being judged, if you're going to be like, you know what, I'm doing so good, but they're judging me for that, so let me go do the bad stuff. Yeah, let me get arrested. Let me get stay out forever. Hey, guys, see you later. Why would you do that? You need to start embracing the judgment of good. If you feel in your heart that you're doing the right thing, stay there. Fail. Look, like right now, let's say me and your niggas are friends, right? You are. And then... <laughs> wow, we're not friends. We're sisters and brothers. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. Wow. But it's like this, it's like, hey, her and I are friends. We've been friends for 20 years, whatever, whatever, right? We're, we're that 20 years, and this is an opportunity right now. Oh, do you know the person next to you? <coughs> do you know the person next to you? No, right? There's a reason why you're sitting by next to someone that you don't know, right? Because eventually, that could be that person that could change your life. Mickey and I met years before Beachbody. Every time we met... And I hate talking. Back then, I used to hate talking. Yeah, true story. I, I promise. I promise. No, it's yeah, a true story. No. I said it. I was a true story. Listen, let's just say. Let's just say. Let's just say. Let's just say exactly. Except for her. But let's just say this. When she was starting her PNAS journey, I used to nod. Her. I was like, she, she had a burger with like no buns. I'm like, yeah, that's the best part of the burger. I'm like, you can't just down that. Don't worry about it. It's only one yeah. meal. And uh, I remember that story. And the, the, the point is, is that every time her and I got together, we spoke longer than I would speak to many people. And I don't even remember half the conversations. But at the end of the day, God has his purpose, right? Who knew that we would be partners, right wings, developing people like yourselves to be more, do more, and then encourage and empower other people? So embrace the people that brought you here. Embrace the people that you're next to. And I, and I challenge you to sit next to someone that you don't know. By the end of this, you should be gaining friends. Because this could be your family. Because I promise you this. In this business, I lost many friends. I lost many friends. But guess what? They all came back. They all come back. Why? Because eventually, if you do something like... like um, Ouch. If everyone does, but if, like your name, it's consistency is key, guys. If you stay consistent in the direction that you're going, you are going to inspire everyone. Just because you don't inspire them today, like she said, embrace the news. Yes. That's what you should be doing. You know why? Because those people are gonna come back. Sure they're always going to come back but the only way they're going to come back is if you stay consistent if you stay unfearful I don't even think that's a word but unfearful if you stay fearless that's a word if you stay with that's a word listen I just created a word for the dictionary just put it in there right? heck this in but if you become fearless of your actions and smack fear in the face you're going to be successful stop overthinking stop worrying about being judged Stop worrying about if I'm not there yet. Am I going to be successful? Embrace yourself. Look in the mirror today. Tell yourself how much you love yourself. Because some of you have not done that for a long time. And I know that. Because when I speak, it's not Hector. I learn to embrace. I see tears. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I love when I see tears. But you know what it is? But, but let me tell you. I like, I like to do that. I know. No, 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 no. But I'm going to show you an example. I was trying to have a moment. I know. But it was me. Her, it, it's God, me, and her right now. Oh, understand this. Whatever those, whatever those feelings that you're having is a switch inside of your heart. You are finally... Turning on your light 
into the light. That's the only reason I apologize. No, no. <laughs> it's 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 a switch in your heart that we need to turn on because it's been off for so many years. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to find that switch, you need to dig deeper. And you need to find yourself. And you got to be okay at all times. If you get judged, so what? If somebody tells you, if listen, if somebody knocks you on Facebook. It's a quick little line that says, Bullet! Block! Use the power in your fingers. Because remember, remember this finger right here? You should write choice. Because this finger is what's going to decide the choices that you make. All right, you're just cutting me off. She just seriously just cut my neck off. But um, with that being said, guys, thank you for your time. Thank you for, I hope that, I like, like I told them, I like to throw a, little, a different twist. Now, I don't want to just train you because at the end of the day, if you don't write the, have the right mindset, I just opened up your mind to the rest of the training. Because whatever we're going to give you, embrace it. It's valuable <coughs> stuff that's going to help you grow. But you got to release the negativity that you came in with. So whatever you came in with, I hope you left it at the door. May God bless you all. And always remember to have faith. Have here. Woo -woo. <laughs> All right, we're next? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, everybody. Hi. 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 Hi